Dang, people are catching some real big flounder. I wonder what they're using for bait and where they're fishing at. Maybe I should get on Facebook on the groups. Maybe I should ask them for some information. Maybe they'll give me some spots. All right, let's test Facebook, see what they say. All right, he said that. Lake Condor? Oh, come on, man. I said, Middle Bay? What is Middle Bay? Does that even exist? Oh my god, these guys aren't taking me seriously. Please answer my question. You don't own the water, bro. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you might think that I'm being facetious or that I'm making fun of you, but that is actually an extremely legit and common scenario that happens on a daily basis on social media. People that ask for spots on Facebook are almost always ridiculed and hung out to dry instantly. Quit asking for spots on Facebook. No one is going to give you their spots. And if they do, it's probably a well-known spot that everybody fishes. But it doesn't have to be like that. Which is why I made this video to help you find and catch more flounder instantly. Don't turn to social media for help. Watch this tutorial and you'll be catching elite sized flounder in no time. I'm going to teach you the basics about lures, how to work them, and how to find your own spot. Alright, let's do it. As you get more experience about flounder fishing, one thing you're going to learn about flounder is that flounder are very dormant. They usually lay at the very bottom of the water column and that's it. They don't move very often. And when they do move, it's usually with an outgoing or incoming tides or to find fish. But most of the time, flounder lay at the bottom and they ambush any prey that goes in front of them. Alright, so that saying that, it's going to help you understand why I like to fish with lures and why fishing with lures is probably the best way to catch for flounder. So here are the lures that I like to use. I like to use AM lures. You know, I do mainly night fishing, so this is what I use. These lures here have a great glow-in-the-dark pattern. I mean, they're probably the brightest and the longest lasting. They also have great colors and they smell like garlic, but this is what I've been really successful on, all right? Color-wise, you have a great variety of them. You know, people say that color is extremely important, which it is, but I like to use contrasting colors in the water. So if the water is really dark and dirty, I'm going to use something that's extremely contrast to the water, something like this. Black. I like to use this. This is Midnight Mullet. And it's actually one of my favorite ones to catch flounder on. Midnight Mullet and it's Roach right here. One of the favorite colors to use. Alright, so if you're actually feeling in clean water, I forgot I had these. This right here would be a good color, like a bone with a glitter on it right here. This would be something you would use in a cleaner water, okay? So when you're fishing cleaner water, you want to use subtle colors that aren't too bright. Now, if you're going fishing deep and nasty dark water, then this is something you're going to use right here. This is black black with a silver flake right here this would be perfect for fishing deep and dirty waters right here now of course who doesn't know about this gulp so gulp is also one of the best ways to catch flounder you know really i never had an issue with color with gulp because what really works with gulp is that scent that it has so right here i have my container with gulp juice right here look at all that <laughs> all that whatever it's made out of and i got different colors of gulp that i use here um like i said it doesn't really matter i just bought them more for novelty and i think that's what it was some of these colors like this a uh, blue fusion i think there's salmon red. A lot of those colors I've seen other YouTubers use, and they were pretty overly hyped. And I mean, like I said, you know, with gulp, what really matters is the scent. The other thing that I really think about when I'm using gulp is just the size of the gulp. So here's a six inch grub with the fusion color. This is something that I would use when I'm fishing deep water where I need to get my baits way to the bottom. This is heavier than the lighter ones also, and this will also target big flounder strikes right here. This is the grubs. The grubs always work the best when you're fishing with gulp. Especially these big ones right here. Contrast colors right here. This would be great for nasty water. Deep water also. And here's the other color that people like to use on the East Coast. This is that salmon red right here. It's superly overhyped. It's like for a long time you couldn't get this color because uh, people were making videos. I think John Skinner was having great luck with these out on the East Coast. All right, so I am filming this video in November. Good luck trying to find flounder lures at Walmart, Academy, any store. People are in flocks, going to the stores and just stocking up on all the gulp they can get. You know, gulp is the toilet paper of fishing, honestly. <laughs> Remember in the summer and the pandemic was going on, there was no toilet paper, you couldn't get any of that stuff. Well, that's what's going on with gulp right now, all right? You're also gonna notice there's also other options in regards to what the lures look like when you're fishing with gulp. They have, uh, they got little crabs, they got the grubs, they got the swimming mullet. I always just get the swimming mullet. That always works. Uh, I've never used the crabs or, uh, also, uh, New Penny Shrimp, that's another good color that people like to use and it looks really good. So as long as you stick with the shrimp and the swimming mullet, you should be good. Oh, and the grubs. Alright, so let's talk about jigs. Most of the time when you're fishing with anything with water under 5 feet, and I like to use uh, the lightest jig you can find. Right here, this is a uh, 
one eighth of an ounce jig. And of course, the, you know, the skinner you fish and the lighter you're gonna use. But most of the time, this is what works, you know. This is a nice strike, a one eighth ounce jig. And I use this on a tandem rig, everybody knows that. But if you didn't, tandem rig is one of the best ways to catch flounder. Now, if you're fishing deeper water, then of course you wanna use heavier, bigger jigs right here. And also if you're using big baits like the grubs, and this is what you're gonna use here. This is a three quarters of an ounce uh, Academy H2O Express with a little rattle inside. And uh, this works really good also. Another tactic of mine is I like to use these owner uh, hooks right here and it has a little blade at the bottom. And this really gets the attention of the flounder. This little blade right here, when you're fishing, when you're dragging this at the bottom or slowly reeling it in, it starts to shine and really bright and really gets the attention of the flounder right here. Here you go. So we've talked about types of lures, but how do we work them? Now flounder fishing is easy, but it can also be hard. I usually have the best luck jigging for flounder. Flounder are mainly located at the bottom of structure, which is why jigging for flounder is one of the best ways to catch them. There are multiple ways to work lures, such as steady, slow retrieve, slow, slow jigging, jig, jig, pause, etc. But this mainly depends on one factor, which is water temperature. When you're fishing for flounder in warm water, you can work lures at an average speed since the flounder aren't lethargic. Many people will continuously work lures very slowly for flounder, regardless of temperature. Don't do that. If the water is warm, the pinfish will be around and they will leap the tails off your lures. And that is extremely annoying. When the water starts to drastically cool down, you will have to slow down your jigging and retrieve. Here, let me show you. Here I'm in uh, late November fishing for flounder. See how I'm jigging very close to this wall. Notice how when I feel a bite, I immediately set the hook. The fish wasn't barely hooked or anything, it was hooked very well. There is absolutely no reason to wait multiple seconds to set the hook when fishing with lures. If I had waited to set the hook, this fish would have swallowed the lure, the hook would have been in the gills. I would have had to keep it because it would be bleeding. Imagine how many undersized flounder are gut hooked and released to die because people wait multiple seconds. You will see that in all the videos in this tutorial the hook is immediately set without missing a single bite. The main trick to flounder fishing is that you have to find structure to fish for flounder. You simply can't just cast your lure into the bay, into the ocean, and expect flounder just to magically be there. Flounder loves structure. That will make your life a lot simpler, okay? Any structure such as a bank wall, a concrete slab, rocks, jetties, things of that nature, boats, docks, piers, any type of structure will probably hold flounder. Now here's another example why it's so important to fish structure. Here we go, see, look, I'm just fishing this corner area right here, right along the wall. And uh, interesting here is that I don't think these guys wanted me to fish their spot. Uh, <laughs> you'll see that uh, I uh, catch a flounder on like the first cast here. But these guys, uh, I don't think they wanted me to be there. <laughs> but anyways, here we go. Huh? Oh, is it? <laughs> Told you there was one right here. The only thing is that they're really, really skittish, but you can see them. But they're there though. Look at that. That's a flounder. That's a flounder. Fuck yeah. Let me take it over here. I knew there was flounder here. All right, so we measured it's 20 inches and uh, let's continue because I know there's more in here. It's that easy. Combine the jig jig pause technique and some structure and you'll land a ton of flounder, guaranteed. All right, let's move on to the most controversial topic of fishing. <laughs> and I really hate talking about this to be honest. Spots. I'm not here to give any spots away. I don't believe in enabling anybody. I'm giving you the tools to find flounder and this is all you really need. If you're in the Galveston area and if you don't want to find your own spot, you can always just go to Seawolf Park, the ferry landing. Now, <laughs> if you decide to go to the ferry landing, I suggest you bring your boxing gloves. There's been several fights there over flounder. People are fighting over which rock they're fishing on, stuff like that. But come on, man, people fight over flounder. <laughs> it's crazy, you know, it's, it's, it's insane what people do over flounder. But see, things like that is what happens when you don't find your own spot. 
You can also go to the Texas City Dyke. That's five miles of structure. A lot of people actually catch some real nice flounder there. You just have to find the right spot and you gotta put the time and effort into it. Now, the biggest con of not finding your own spot is that you'll be subject to extremely public areas with high foot traffic. It's gonna be hard fishing these spots, especially during the flounder run. It's already hard enough to fish for these spots without the flounder run. Now, before I end this video, I wanna give you one more tip. But this is a different tape that most people don't give you. This is actually a psychological tip. When you go out and fish for flounder, just fish, just fish. Don't worry about anybody else. Don't worry about anybody's fishing gear, how they're dressed, what kind of reel they have, what kind of rod they have, what they look like. And to be honest, I don't even suggest posting your catch on social media. Who cares what people think? Just fish. You see, there's gonna be a ton of elitism out there, and I mean a ton. My phrase, elite AF, is actually a passive aggressive phrase that I use to make fun of elitism. That I used to make fun of these pro staff guys that think that they're like gods, fishing gods, that they can catch blue marlin out in Galveston Bay and stuff like that. There's always someone out there that thinks they're better than you. And you'll hear BS like, oh, it takes the flounder run for people to catch flounder. I can catch flounder in the summer while I'm taking a dump. Well, okay, cool. Good for you, pro staff guy. Nobody cares if you catch flounder in the summer while you're taking a dump. It's not a competition, it's fishing. Fishing. It's just fishing. Just a hobby. Just fish and have fun. All right, well, that's it. I hope you enjoy and are able to learn from this video. I have a whole plethora of how-to videos on my channel that will help you become an elite angler. Whether it's redfish, flounder, mackerel, how to cast, etc. It's all there on my channel, all right? Please subscribe, hit the thumbs button, and that's it. Thanks for watching. Good luck out there.